Hi, I'm uh, Tomislav Galianic, and this is a continuation of our lecture on supervised machine learning. In the previous uh, lecture, we talked about decision trees, introduced the basics, and now we will take a look at uh, how the decision trees are built more formally. So let's get started. So uh, let's uh, see what we talked about last time, just uh, as a little uh, uh, recap. Uh, so uh, we saw that uh, decision trees are basically like flowcharts. Uh, we have different nodes at which we make uh, decisions. We, we have data sets that we evaluate on how pure they are in terms of the data belonging to one or more classes. And then uh, depending on, uh, on, on uncertainty in, in different classes, we are picking uh, certain features and conditions on how to basically uh, split them. Uh, we also looked at, uh, you know, informally how uh, to decide on, on choosing that split, you know, which, uh, which feature and which condition. And uh, now we would really want to put that into a formal algorithm. So what's the basic approach? Well, the basic approach is to, um, to find a feature uh, at every point and uh, and a condition related to that feature uh, that would uh, you know split the the existing data set into smaller data sets in a way that uh, gives us a clear picture of uh, of the class of the data uh, by different subsets um, and uh, we do that by starting at the root and uh, continue uh, splitting that data recursively into smaller and smaller subsets. And we do it until we, we reach some termination point. Maybe, uh, you know, we can't split the data anymore or, you know, we decided we don't want to split the data um, if we have less than a certain number of points. So some of the key questions that would come, come up uh, in our mind then are, you know, can we use, uh, you know, a particular strategy for what's the best strategy for that? Is there an optimal strategy? Uh, and, and basically, uh, we do find that uh, you know, picking the, the the split features and conditions uh, does make make a difference, as well as there may be a, a actually an optimal strategy. However, uh, we uh, we actually uh, know that that's an NP hard problem, meaning that it is very difficult to solve, or it would take close to infinite amount of time to solve, and and therefore we resort to some uh, some simpler algorithms. Uh, that are uh, close to optimal. So basically what they are, uh, they're basically uh, type of algorithms that we call greedy algorithms, because uh, at every point of, uh, uh, every point of time, uh, we're trying to do the best we can, can at that point, looking sort of myop myopically at our available decisions. So what does a greedy algorithm do? Well, uh, it starts off with all the data. Uh, and if the data is not of, of all the same class, then it uh, determines um, a feature and condition over uh, which to split. And it does so by maximizing some notion of information gain. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so we do the partition, split each uh, uh, data into subsets, and uh, we continue doing that until we reach some termination point. Um, so let's talk about that quickly. Um, decision trees are actually prone to overfitting. And uh, so uh, we actually do uh, utilize some, some hyperparameters as we estimate the model to figure out how to best uh, you know, limit their overfitting. And uh, we may do so by maybe limiting number of uh, uh, data points or, or having like a minimum number of data points that uh, we would need to have to in order to do the split uh, or maybe uh, um, limit the number of uh, the, the, the height, the, the depth of the tree, prune off some of the, the levels and so forth. Okay, uh, now let's focus on that information gain. Uh, so the information gain really talks about comparing the information in the data set prior and after the, the split. And what we're really interested in is the purity of that data set. Um, the information gain is, uh, is actually not a new thing. It's, uh, it's been uh, covered in the information theory in the past. And so we uh, in data science actually borrow uh, the idea uh, from and one of the concepts from the information theory and that is the concept of entropy. So let's talk about a little bit about uh, what the entropy is. Uh, basically you can think of entropy as a sort of the uncertainty in the data 
um, if we have a variable which can take on you know number of different um, levels uh, and, and each one of them has a certain probability then we say that uh, you know the, the entropy is higher when uh, there is more uncertainty you know which of the values uh, we will observe and so um, you know that is uh, you know maybe in a, in a simple example best uh, described if we look at the graph at the uh, bottom right corner where we plot the entropy as a function of probability uh, for a like a two class problem. So we can have our y variable to be either one or zero and uh, uh, an entropy here is plotted as a function of probability of uh, class uh, one. Uh, and of course the class zero will be then just one minus the, the class one. So. Let's, let's quickly look at some examples. Uh, if we have uh, probability P of being class one 0 0.5, we see that the entropy is the highest, that is value one. And uh, if the probability of the class one variable is zero or one, then we have entropy zero. Uh, this can, I would say actually makes, uh, makes sense because uh, if we know that probability of, uh, of this variable in one of the classes is zero or one, then we have a, you know, we're very certain about what information we may get. Whereas when there's a 50% chance of observing one value uh, or 50% uh, the other value of this variable, then uh, we, we really don't have a very clear information. And so uh, therefore there's a lot of uncertainty and therefore a lot of ent entropy. So uh, the, the particular formula for entropy is written in the, uh, in the, at the bottom of the slide. It's basically a negative sum of the products of each, prob of each probability with a uh, log two base uh, probability. Let's look at the specific example. Uh, uh, here we have on the left-hand side, the little table. Uh, it has uh, one feature which is major and it has um, the, the y value output as false or true. And uh, basically what we're looking at is whether a student, depending on a major, likes or does not like stats. Uh, this is also uh, shown in the Python code on the right-hand side. Basically uh, in this example, let's look at the entropy of like stats. Um, we have uh, eight rows, four of those are false, four of those are true. So not having any other information. So assuming sort of starting with the full data set, we basically would have 50% chance being, uh, you know, in the case where a student doesn't like stats and 50% chance that he does like stats. So uh, the entropy actually would be uh, one. Now, what we may be interested in as a next step then is to uh, see how this entropy changes if we look at, uh, you know, breaking the data by, uh, you know, by our major, which is our feature and uh, seeing uh, if we can have some more clarity on uh, whether a student would like uh, stats or not depending on its major. And that brings us to the, uh, to the idea of conditional entropy. Conditional entropy basically is, um, is, is sort of a entropy defined at a, for a subset of data conditional on that data belonging uh, to a particular split, to a particular subset. So in case of our decision tree, we would have, we start off with initial uh, data set at, at, at the node, then after we split it conditionally on being in left or right tree, uh, the data would have a different level of entropy. And then we would actually have to combine those two uh, or, or more uh, subsets and their entropies into a, a single value. So we can compare it to the level of entropy prior to the split or with the goal of really seeing you know, how, how those two compare. So uh, the conditional entropy, <clears throat> uh, as the formula shows at the very bottom would be defined sort of as a, as a probability weighted uh, in entropies for a given um, for a given subset. So in our case, we would have entropy value for each uh, uh, subset after the split. And then we would weight those, uh, those, those uh, entropies by the probability of being in that class. That is the proportion of the data that falls in, in that subset. Okay, um, how does that look particularly with our input data set that is uh, major and like stats? Well, after we do the the split on major, uh, we actually see that the entropy would be 0 0.5. Uh, 
and um, and that's basically some some basically some uh, some benefit. Uh, particularly, what we're benefiting here with is that if we end up being uh, if student is English major or stats major, then we have a very clear answer whether he or she would like stats. In case of a stats major, the answer is yes, instead of English major, it is, uh, uh, is no. Uh, so uh, basically putting it all together, let's look at the information gain before and after. Uh, before we had uh, entropy of like stats as one, after we have 0 0.5, and this basically tells us that uh, we have information gain of 0 0.5. Now, in, in practical problems, we would have more features, more data points. We would actually look at a you know, number of different possibilities, and then we would evaluate each one of those possible splits based on the uh, you know, different feature and conditions. And we would basically then, uh, in our greedy algorithm, would pick the, uh, the feature and, and the split uh, the, the one that actually maximizes that information gain uh, at, at that step. And we would continue doing that uh, until, like I said, uh, we, we, we reach some terminating condition. Okay. Uh, besides entropy, let me also just mention that uh, there is uh, another uh, method uh, construct you can use. It's called Gini index. It similarly measures uncertainty in the data. It is maximized at one, minimized at zero. Uh, we won't go into details here, but there are different possibilities that, that can be used. Okay, and just to summarize now, um, you know, we have defined a formal model on building a decision tree. Uh, the, 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 the model really uh, uh, consists of uh, choosing a uh, split point uh, at every, at starting with the root node and then at intermediate nodes until we reach uh, some sort of uh, terminated condition, such as, you know, we can't split the data anymore. Uh, we discussed how uh, the problem of finding the optimal split, that is the right feature and the right condition is an NP hard problem. And therefore we, we actually uh, in practice don't, uh, don't try to solve it that way. We, we actually use a greedy algorithm and that greedy algorithm is, is an algorithm that maximizes information gain uh, going from the pre-split to the uh, to the post-split uh, state, uh, we talked about using uh, entropy and conditional entropy in, in uh, assessing the information gain, and we also mentioned uh, the Gini index. Finally, let me just make a note that uh, uh, one good thing about the decision trees is, um, unlike other supervised machine learning algorithms, the decision trees don't require um, any kind of uh, normalization of standardization. That is, they are scaling invariant. And so, um, you know, we can sort of uh, avoid uh, that additional work. So this was our formal definition of decision trees. And then now in the next lecture, we will move uh, uh, at and look at the decision trees and overfitting and see how to, to deal with that problem and what alternative models we have uh, that will improve on that on that uh, feature.